Let's make a giant utensil. This is the last thing I have to make for Miku, and I left it for last because I legitimately didn't think I was even gonna do it. Because all the right tools for prop making are mostly toxic chemicals. So I've basically had to backwards engineer this thing to be able to use all of the wrong tools for a fork that is 100% non-toxic, but not dishwasher safe. So here's my problem. These are the right tools. These are what most people use for props. This is what I've used for props before, but all of these need to be used outside and with a respirator. And I live in an apartment with no outdoor space. So everything I'm gonna use has to be used inside. So it's a challenge of weaker glues, cuts that cannot be cleaned up with a Dremel, no spray paint, and I'm competing in this, so it has to look as clean as if I had been able to use those tools. So let's talk about what I can use. So the glues I have chosen to work with are not only strong, but they do work well together. And I am going to be using a combination of hot glue and tacky glue. Hot glue is very problematic to work with, not just because it can burn you, but because it gets really messy. And if you get it on a piece near the outside, it's gonna mess everything up and you're never gonna be able to remove it. Whereas tacky glue is water soluble it's much more spreadable, but the problem with tacky glue is it takes a really long time to dry. But if I use tacky glue and hot glue in combination, putting an even layer of tacky glue around all the edges of the piece and using hot glue sparingly around the middles of the piece, then we can have the fast setting power of the hot glue with the strength and cleanliness of the tacky glue. So, those are the glues. Also, on top of all that, I'm not actually going to paint this thing. I'm gonna cover it in fabric. We'll see how that goes. But I know I just talked about glues, but we're not even gonna use the glues yet. First thing we gotta do is cut. This is eight millimeter foam from Dante Cosplay Supply. It is the high density foam. I'm not really sure the difference between them. I, I guess that makes it denser. So the first step is gonna be tracing my pattern onto the foam. I'm gonna do the little tricky trick I've seen people do where they, where they pin it to the foam, because that's smart. Because I can't dremel this, the cuts really need to be perfect. So it would actually be really bad if I mess up this outline. Stupid bitch. Now we can get to cutting it. I feel like a lot of cosplayers are box cutter people. I have never been a box cutter people. I am an exacto knife bitch. I don't know what the obsession with box cutters is. I'm not hating them, but I just like exacto knives better. Uh, the blades are so much easier to replace. And that's kind of the big important thing with cutting things in EVA foam. You want a really sharp blade. You might be like, but Sarah, buying replacement blades for exacto knives is really expensive. No, it's not actually. If you go on like eBay, uh, you can find hundred packs of them for really cheap. I bought this years ago and I still haven't gotten through it. I am going to put a brand new fresh blade on this. There is another tool that I want though. Okay, another thing you probably want is a nice big ruler, a metal one in particular, so that you can get right up next to it and cut. That's gonna give you really straight lines. Uh, unfortunately, there are not many straight lines on this fork and for curves, you kind of have to just be careful. Uh, the big hardest thing in cutting this out is gonna be these little guys. Uh, and the secret to that is just gonna be a sharp blade and a lot of praying. How many blades do you think I'm gonna go through? <laughs> See that? That's what we want. The big important thing on curves is you do not want to stop at any point. You wanna keep that free flowing motion all the way down because if you do that, you're not gonna have any awkward, weird little spots on there. You can see I got a little bit of banding right here, but there's nothing too obtrusive. Okay, now comes the hard part. I wanna make sure these lines all come out really straight, so I'm gonna use the ruler, and I'm gonna line them up on the like insidey bit of that white line, because the white line's not like super thin, it's kind of a fat line. Nice. <laughs> and now I've got these thingies. It's time for the hard part. These tiny little curves. I'm gonna keep this blade because it's not super dull, but I am gonna switch to a brand new one for this. Okay, not the best, but it's not bad. Oh, that one came out way better. 
Look at that. That one's not bad. Watch me play that music. I always play that's like boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Any opportunity to make my video more like the Great British Bake Off, I take. Oh, oh yeah, that one was bad. My knife's gotten a little dull. Okay, worst one so far, because the knife got dull by then. So now we know we can do two before it gets too dull. See, this one is bad, but it's okay. You won't really see them, but you, we want it to be as clean as possible so that it doesn't cause any problems later. Because I don't know if the fabric covering will even work. So if I have to use this as is, then I have to use this as is. All right, that's our two fork pieces. They've got some clean cuts in some places and some unclean cuts in others. So I'm gonna, I gotta do a couple things to my bottom piece. The way I'm gonna get this to like sit like a fork is two things. So for one, I'm going to cut myself a little piece this size and I'm gonna glue that to the bottom here. I, that's gonna give me more volume up here at the top, kind of the way a fork has more volume at the top and the prongs are like flatter. The other thing I'm gonna do to get it to be in that like curved shape is I've made myself a little wire pitchfork and we're gonna stick this in between them. So I'm actually gonna score this foam a little bit and hopefully I'll be able to kind of stick the wire a little bit into the foam uh, so that the two layers have a better chance of like sitting flat together. So it was actually kind of a struggle to get the wire in, but with the help of some masking tape and these little rubber thimbles that I used to like smush the hot glue down, I did get it in. So now that the hot glue's dry, you can see why we use it very sparingly. It's because it's really ugly and really messy looking. But now we're gonna switch over to the tacky glue, which we can use a lot more liberally because you can wash it away. I'm gonna cut myself a little scrap piece of foam because we're gonna need it because we wanna essentially apply the glue and then kind of smooth it out with the little piece of foam. And the really big thing is you want to get it all the way out to the edges. So that's why we have the piece of foam to spread it around. Oh, I almost forgot. The little piece. I didn't put the little piece in there. Ah! I have nothing to worry about. You know why? Tacky glue takes forever to dry. So I'm actually totally okay, but I do need to cut this little piece. <laughs> okay. Now back to the tacky glue. <laughs> tacky glue is non-toxic. I'm pretty sure it's one of those glues that you could like eat and it wouldn't hurt you. Not that I think you should eat it. The other thing with the toxic glues is like, even if you have a respirator on and you have gloves on and you have everything, it's still like really stressful. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. Contact cement works really well. If you wanted to do this in contact cement, it would be a lot easier. Uh, but there are harmful things that will hurt your brain. And your brain, your brain is more important than cosplay. Way more important. Here's what we got, a very glue thing. I'm gonna let that glue get a little bit tacky and then I'm gonna take my top and I'm gonna glue it down. Oh, I forgot. I forgot again. <laughs> so another thing I'm gonna do is actually also use hot glue. So I'm gonna score this foam really quick and scoring it helps the hot glue get in there better. And in these really central locations where none of the hot glue is gonna come out, I'm gonna put a bunch of hot glue. Okay, now we do it. I'm gonna pin the prongs of the forks together so that they stay together. Well, here she is. So hopefully it'll glue together well. Um, I'm gonna probably put a bunch of heavy stuff on top of it too. But yeah, now we gotta wait basically until tomorrow. But we can. Move on to the strawberry. Gold is one of those colors that's really hard to achieve. And I've never had luck getting a really pretty metallic gold from acrylic paints. So I'm gonna be covering this entire thing, hopefully, in... Ooh, that's a terrible sound. Four-way stretch gold lame. Uh, this was from Big Z Fabrics and I got it on sale. I have a plan. I'll explain the plan as we go, but Basically, we're doing two different methods. The strawberry, that's a terrible sound. The PVC pipe and the head of the fork are gonna be covered differently, but the strawberry here, basically like the more basic way that you cover EVA foam and fabric, this isn't a new thing. People have been doing this for a while, but this is the way most people do it with glue. Most of the time people do it with contact cement. So this makes it a little more of a struggle. So I did a little test. 
Here's my little test piece. For one, it's very shiny. It looks terrible on the back, but it's very shiny and it doesn't look bad from five feet away. Uh, if you get real close to it, you can see it looks a little messy, but I think I've come up with a better way to do it. So I've already cut out my pieces for my strawberry. And then I also cut it out of foam core. Now foam core is, it's very stiff and sturdy and to reinforce, I stuck a wooden dowel in it. <laughs> PVA foam, while you know it, it stands up pretty good, it can bend and I don't want this to bend ever. I essentially need to cover each of these pieces in the fabric individually. And the hardest one is going to be this guy. I already cut this piece out. So basically what I did was I took my cutout piece and I put it on the gold lame. And then I cut a bunch of little notches on all the corners, but on the test piece, did I just throw that somewhere? Where did it go? Anyway, on the test piece, I used hot glue for the back. I think if I take this and I glue the front down with tacky glue, I then can maybe take these sides and pull them over and hand sew these edges together. I don't know if that'll work, but it might work. So I'm gonna try to do that, but tonight the only thing I can do is tacky glue this to this. Maybe when you see this piece again, it will be hand sewn. So verdict on the hand sewing is it actually worked pretty well. In some places it's not really working, particularly on these little tiny baby sections. There's just not enough fabric to like reach all the way around. So those are just gonna get glued down. But on these bigger sections where there actually was enough fabric, it worked pretty well. It looks really nice. Uh, that's what it was. This is how it looks on the back. So I'll show you how I'm doing this. The short version is it's a whip stitch, but since this is a prop video, there might be somebody that doesn't know how to hand sew at all. So I'm gonna over explain how to hand sew. So I have some yellow thread and I like to use double threads when I hand sew. I'm gonna thread my needle and I'm gonna pull that thread all the way back to the other end. So now I have a big, basically a loop and I'm gonna take both of those ends and I tie my thread off this way. So I'm gonna double it over so that I get a double knot and then I wrap it around my finger and then I twist, grab it with my nail and it makes a knot. And then I'm gonna wax my thread because it's a double loop. So a thing that can happen is it can kind of get caught on stuff and then like make a knot in the middle of it, which sucks because then you have to start over. And waxing your thread helps keep it from like getting tangled and stuff. So I just take the beeswax and go, ah. now we're ready. I'm gonna put my knot on one side. I'm going in one side, I'm going in the other side. I'm pulling that pretty tight, I'm just sewing them together. And it comes out looking like that. And then to finish it, there's a really easy way to finish uh, hand sewing by doing this kind of knot. So you put the thread in, you go one, two, three around the needle, and then you pull it out. And that's a knot and that will stay. So now I have to wait for these little pieces to dry before I can do anything with that piece. So now I'm gonna explain how we're doing the cover for these pieces, which is going to be very similar to how we're covering the body of the fork and the PVC. So essentially I'm gonna make like a gold sock out of the spandex. So here I have two pieces of spandex put right sides together. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sew around this line that I have marked which is actually just a perfect tracing of this pattern. So instead of marking like my seam allowances, I've actually marked where the seam needs to go, which is gonna give me a much more precise stitch, which is what I want because I want this to fit perfectly. But I'm not gonna sew the whole thing up, right? Because if I did that, I wouldn't be able to get this in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew all the way around and then I'm gonna give myself a nice big gap right here. And so that way I'll have a hole to stick those through, but then that'll obviously be open. So I'm gonna go through and I will hopefully be able to do a blind stitch there and close it off. And hopefully if I do really small stitches, you won't be able to see it. Um, now this is a stretch fabric, but I'm gonna use a straight stitch instead of a zigzag stitch or a lightning stitch because this is not gonna go over my body. It could still snap when I put this on, but once it gets on there, there's not a whole lot of likelihood that it's gonna snap. And the straight stitch is gonna look flatter than if I did a lightning stitch or a zigzag stitch. So we're technically sewing this wrong. 
but I think it's gonna look better on the outside if we do a straight stitch. Well, forgot to stop to leave room for it to go in and I had to pick a bunch of the stitches out. Okay, now that we have a hole for it to go through, uh, I'm gonna clip all of my corners so that all the corners can turn out right. God, it's so sticky. Okay, there's the other end. Okay, we're good. All right, okay, let's go for this. The crown is causing a problem, but the crown is gonna have little balls on the top of it. So I think I'm just gonna cut the points off the top of the crown. And I think that'll help ease some of the sh that's happening over there. I mean, it doesn't look great, but it doesn't look bad, bad. And I mean, this is kind of my only choice. So I'm gonna sew the side of this up with a blind stitch. So we'll see if that makes it look any better. So I thought I'd be able to do a blind stitch, but I can't seem to get it to work. So I ended up just doing like a really ugly whip stitch on the top part of it because I realized the edge details are gonna go on there. But with that sealed up, I went back to the prongs for a bit. Okay, so this thing is glued together. Basically this piece and the PVC pipe are gonna be enclosed in the same fabric sock. And if you're an experienced sewist, you may be looking at the table right now and going, no, Sarah. No, you aren't doing gussets for a fork, are you? I'm doing gussets. I'm doing gussets for the fork. Um, if you have no idea what gussets are, if you've ever had a pair of like leather gloves, you may have noticed there will be a little piece of fabric that goes in between your fingers. That's a gusset. Gussets can be put in lots of different garments for lots of different reasons, but they're essentially a little piece that helps go around curves. Um, and I'm putting them in my fork. If you've never heard of gussets before, you might not know. They are probably the most fiddly and annoying thing you could ever sew ever. Uh, and now I'm doing them in gold metallic spandex. But at least the fork only has three. Uh, so these are the gussets. They're just like little strips of fabric. And I did measure these. I don't know like the most succinct way to explain how I measured this, but essentially in Adobe Illustrator, if you select just a line and you open the document window, it'll tell you how long that line is. So that's how I got this. I didn't actually measure it because I didn't have to. But yeah, now I have the annoying and fiddly task of sewing these little strips around these curves. So the first thing I need to do is sew them right sides together with the bottom piece and then somehow get the top onto them. Basically, I'm making this like you would a gusseted glove, which sucks and I've only done like twice, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> But I also marked all of these pieces with regular ass pen because this is not dishwasher safe, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> but it's gonna help me a lot because it's gonna let me see exactly where that seam needs to go, which is gonna be really crucial for getting it to fit on the EVA foam. So basically, wish me luck. I don't really know how to over explain how to install gussets because it really is, you just put them right sides together and very carefully sew a straight stitch around the curve. This is an incredibly <laughs> challenging kind of thing to do, but at least it's really big. At least it's not the size of a glove, right? So on the first gusset, I tried sewing the long edges first and then doing the curve, and that didn't super work. So then on the second gusset, I tried sewing the curve first and the long pieces second, and that also was kind of annoying. So then for the third gusset, I just sewed the curve by hand and then came back and sewed the long pieces. Okay, so here's our first side with the gussets. Now we gotta take the other side and sew it to all the gussets. I have, I lined it up here at this corner so that I know for sure that like that line and that line are the same. And I'm gonna do that over here too. As I suspected, seeing it like this, it like makes sense in my brain. Uh, basically, I gotta take this piece and make sure that's lined up. And you can kind of see like, now I just gotta sew all of the gussets right sides together with this side by like holding all that stuff out of the way. So like that, sew that down. Okay, gussets are done. I went ahead and also trimmed a bunch of these like really close to that seam allowance. And now all I gotta do, which is much simpler than the damn gussets. Basically I have marked right here where my little opening is gonna be. I'm gonna sew from this corner and go all the way up, all the way down the pole and then all the way back up the pole. 
I'm gonna stop right here and then down this corner. And hopefully that'll mean I'll be able to stretch this out and shove this in there. And then I should be able to take the PVC pipe and stick it through the tube that will be this part and then glue them together somehow. We'll figure it out when we get there. And then we get the hard part of trying to turn this thing inside out. So we'll see how that goes, but this is gonna suck. Okay, this is less miserable than I thought it would be. They're big enough that it's not sticking to it. I feel like the tube is gonna be such a pain in the ass, but. So there's that. <laughs> and now this part, I feel like is gonna be really annoying. Nah, I can get my hand in there. It's not that bad. Okay, so we have our deflated fork now. So I'm gonna attempt to shove this into this. So somehow some of the prongs ended up too long. I don't know how that happened. And I will probably do some hand sewing magic to get the tops of these shorter, but like, holy shit, that's a fork. And she is shiny. Yeah, she's got some imperfections. I gotta make sure all these seams are where they need to be. I can say right now though, if I had not done gussets, this would not have worked. So let's fucking go. Okay, I'm excited. So I'm gonna go ahead and bend it. So I've just basically taken a big book and put a big book on it. And I'm gonna... <gasps> Fork! <laughs> I'll play with this to get the curve right. But I mean... Look at it! It looks so silly with the little longy things. I'll fix them, but oh my, it's a four! <laughs> oh, it's so funny. <laughs> it's a fork. Okay, so moment of truth. The concept in my brain is that I should be able to take our PVC pipe and shove it through this tube and then get it in there while it's in the tube. Does that make sense? I'm gonna put it through the tube and then put this into it and then everything will be in the tube. I do need to get this into the tube though. It's not currently in the tube. So now I am going to attempt to shove the PVC pipe into this tube. Okay. So now this is the hard part. We gotta get all the top of the fork stuff in there. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> it's all in there. I just gotta shove that in. Okay, that worked. Now, should I glue it is the question. Like, does it even need to be glued? Cause it's like very solidly in there. So, so I don't think I'm gonna glue it. So I've pulled it up all the way to the top here. And then I think I might just shove these in here. And there we go. <laughs> Come on, that's pretty great. Like I haven't gone and fixed these ends yet, but like, that's pretty great, right? <laughs> but now obviously we have this big hole and that is where the blind stitch is gonna come in. Okay, so I'm gonna try to explain what's going on with the blind stitch, but it's honestly really, really difficult and really hard to explain and also I really need to have it really close to my face to be able to do it. But if you go back to the Ronnie video or the Mona hat video, I have pretty good descriptions and footage of how to do a, like a blind stitch on not something crazy like a fork. And that would probably be more helpful. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing, but the level of ability to get what I'm doing in the camera, probably gonna be hard. So maybe I'll just do like a graphic. Okay, JK, I looked it up. It's not even called a blind stitch. I'm actually talking about an invisible stitch or a ladder stitch, but this is what the stitch pattern looks like, a ladder. So starting from one side, you come out from under the fabric and go parallel into the other side. Then instead of going back to the other side, you take the needle underneath the fabric and go a little further up on the same side and come out of the fabric. And then you cross over to the other side. You do the same thing on that side, going up a little bit and crossing over. And you keep doing that until you get to the end. When you're at the end, you should have a bunch of little stitches crossing over and you should be able to pull it tight and have all of the stitches disappear into the fabric, making it invisible-ish. Going back to the strawberry, I, for some reason, decided to do the red part, not in resin, 
Oh no, but in beating. Why? I still don't know. Why did I do this to myself? I guess I just wanted this project to end the way it started. But with that bad decision finished, I glued that to the backing, glued down some green lace, and then to attach the edges, this is weird, but I actually sewed them on. Why? Because I know myself, and I know that I'm not careful with my props, and it's going to be a lot more durable if I do it this way than if I glued it. But don't worry, these stitches will get covered up in a second, but first, for the balls of the crown, I cut little circles out of the lame, did a gathering stitch around the edge of the circle, popped in a styrofoam ball, and then sealed up the bottom. Then I sewed it to the top of the crown, again, because this needs to be stupid bitch proof. But yeah, because the foam is pretty thin up there, I was able to get a couple stitches going into the foam and a bunch of stitches going through the lame. Finally, to cover up the stitches on the side, I cut a little strip of lame and gave it a really even coat of glue. It's really important that you spread this out because if you have blobs of glue on there, you're gonna see it from the outside. And then I just carefully placed that over the sides and it concealed the stitches. Oh, and the little signature, the last thing I had to do. I basically made myself a little printout with Illustrator, again, because everything I do is in Illustrator. Made that little printout into a cutout. I traced that in heat erase pen, and then I did the signature in flatbacks. I don't know why I really wanted to do it in flatbacks, but I did. But with that, the strawberry part was done. So the way these go together, I have two PVC fittings for them. So they're like the ones with the screws in them. <laughs> I really, I don't know anything about PVC fittings, but like one of them has the screw part and one of them is, you can screw into it anyway. The one fitting is on the top of the fork and then the other fitting is glued to the bottom of the strawberry. And that way I can remove the strawberry. Basically I made these detachable so that I can take the strawberry topper off and store the fork on that end with nothing on it so that the prongs never get hurt and the strawberry doesn't get hurt. But yeah, to attach them, I just screw it on and then I pull the tube up over the fittings. And then the little dip where the fittings are makes a great place to secure the bow. Uh, I actually attached the bow with a zip tie, which is kind of dumb because I have to get a new zip tie every time, but it works. The bow, by the way, is really simple. It's just strips of fabric. And then in the bow part of it, I have some horsehair braid to make it stand up straight. And with that, I finally had my giant utensil. I legitimately wasn't even planning on making this fork. I thought it was gonna be completely impossible to get it competition level with the restrictions I've had to put on myself. And guess what? We did it. I love it. It is absolutely going down as one of my new favorite props I've ever made. Nothing will ever beat out Rose Quartz's shield, but it's pretty far up there. But I mean, like, look at it. I made a giant fork. I could not be happier. But I also, I would love to put this out as a challenge to other cosplayers. Can you make a prop and have the process and the prop be entirely non-toxic? Also, I put out the challenge, can you make a prop dishwasher safe? But yeah, I would love to see more people choosing to do things backwards. I think if we can take some of the poison out of cosplay, it opens it up to more people to be able to do it. Anyway, if you are working on something right now or got something done while this is playing, please let me know in the comments. And it helps the channel out so, so, so much if you break a needle on that like button for me. If you have any questions or just want a soft and comfy community to come to, please come join the Spacecraft Discord. And a big thank you to my big support tier patrons, Pin, Snip, Claire, Emily, Cam, and Julian. Also, Amelia, Marcy, Zen, Reiko, and So Into Music. If you want to support the channel you can check out my patreon but holy sh balls did y'all show up for that wig video i'm completely blown away and i cannot thank you all enough so now more than ever please know that if you are just liking commenting watching or subscribing you are supporting the channel too in a huge way and a big thank you to all of you who have been breaking a terrifying amount of needles on that like button you have skyrocketed the channel in a way i was not expecting i'm seeing y'all that are going back and watching the entire catalog and to see comments on videos that i worked really hard on like the strawberry dress video that basically completely flopped when i posted it literally means the world to me because these videos are as much my art as my cosplay stuff. So from the bottom of my stupid bitch heart, thank you. Bye.